starting a, one of my old vlogs. I'm gonna start it off with showing you how I set up my truck. But we got a big day, actually. We got a big day. We have a brand new house, 2019. It's a, not too big, like 2,200 square feet, 2,500 square feet, I don't remember. And then I have a 6,000 square footer. I'm gonna be in Katy, and then I'm gonna go all the way over to Pearland. So lots of driving, and I gotta keep my, keep my timelines tight today. We, I'm gonna be, but I got it pretty good. We got our trainee on every single one, and there'll be three men on each one uh, today. It's just how it worked out. Normally, you would have a single man for the 2,000 square foot, and a, maybe a team of two for the 6,000 square foot. Uh, but we like to have the trainee to go in there and help us out for the most part But he's getting close and he might be in the field real soon too as well. So this is how I set up my truck I always like to put my drone on the bottom here get my toolbox my backpack and then I uh, keep my Keep my fleers back there Fleer moisture meter and whatnot uh, the more expensive stuff back there So I bring it all in at once. It sits pretty tight in the truck. All right Let's uh, head over to Katie and see what we're gonna go find. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I lied. It's 2,700 square feet and I am way deep into Katie. So <laughs> I got some work ahead of me, uh, but I'll do my best to video anything we find uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what we find on new builds and then um, hop in my truck and haul my butt down into Pearland. And when I'm in Pearland, I mean, I'm deep into Pearland. So I got some miles in front of me today, which is, uh, one thing people forget to understand about home inspections, I'd say 50% of the job is just driving. So if you are looking to become a home inspector, make sure that you understand that you drive a lot, a lot. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, let's go knock this one out. All right, so every time I'm on the roof and I see caulking over, overflowing from the shingles, like here and right here, I like to pick at the cock to see what's underneath. And sure enough, when you take it off, you can see an exposed fastener underneath. Yeah, so one of the most common finds that we find on a roof right there is um, exposed fasteners. They get, they get really, really fast and they'll start slamming the nails out and they'll miss the starter strip or where the, the, the nails are designated to go, they get a little sloppy and they'll, the shingles won't lay over the nails properly. So what, what it ends up being is a penetration point and what they do is just go over there and caulk it. And caulking will only last like four or five years and eventually it will cause a roof leak. So it won't be an actual 20 year roof. Most of the time they only last 18, but you know how it goes. All right, uh, let's go see what else we're gonna find. So you can see this roof is a little bit steeper than normal and where we like to stick to is the ridges and valleys and it's the safest spot. Don't do what James is doing right now. That is completely against what I was saying. <laughs> but yeah, you stick to ridges and valleys and uh, what Warren is doing is it's a hard to see area and you always wanna make sure you look down in those hard to see areas because sometimes we'll look in there and there'll actually be missing siding altogether. Wrapping up on the outside here, we found all kinds of little things, but remember it is okay on a new build to obsess about the little things because the little things can lead to issues down the line. So we found some shingle damage, we found some flashing lifting from the ground. So that's the reason why we walk close and then wide because on our wide pass, we noticed that we missed some missing flashing uh, from the ground. We found mortar improvement, uh, post-tension cables exposed, a leaky faucet hose bib, and uh, some caulking improvement around windows. And then we even found a window that has some scratches across it. We even write up those too as well because we like to treat them as like a brand new car. Would you complain about scratches on your brand new car? You should about your house too as well. So uh, you wanna try to talk about all these items whenever you're doing it. All right, let's go into the attic and uh, see what we're gonna see in there and keep on moving. Okay, in the attic space, pretty clean. Got a few minor things. Uh, the blower motor is out of balance. The coil housing is leaking water. The pan is holding water, and we believe it's because it's so dirty. A lot of times what they do is do, when they're installing sheetrock and stuff, they run these units and they get really clogged up. And then we also have a mechanical exhaust vent separated over there. I know I'm kind of cruising through these ones, but we got to keep our timelines. But I still want to show you everything we're doing today. Um, also, 
uh, the we had a, a previous water leak over here. I got the gardener <laughs> to spray the roof with the water hose. And so we're gonna shoot it with the thermal scan. Real clever, Chris. All right, let's do this. <laughs> nice spot, man. Warren, tell everyone what I missed. Portland support. <laughs> this is an example of what I compared it to. To right here, we only have one support running down. It's supposed to be every four, eight feet? Four feet. Four feet. Yeah. Noise. Noise spot. So that uh, gardener really helped us out. So check this out. Let me see if I can pull this off. There you go, look at that. He sprayed the water on the roof for us just to, <laughs> to see if, uh, if it, the roof is still leaking and you can kind of see here where it's leaking in the corner. And what a nice guy. He uh, made sure to emulate rain on the roof for us so we can find the water leak for the clients. Okay, on the inside of this one, it's pretty clean. Uh, we got a little bit of just paint defects, a little bit of hardware loose. You can see even like the hardware damage right here on the door. So a lot of little minor stuff. We still add it all in the report. Did we get any loose outlets? Loose outlets? Yes. Oh, yeah. we got a loose outlet in the kitchen. So, you know, I would say that all these finds are pretty common for a new build. So um, let's get something to eat and then head all the way down to Pearland and get that 6,000 square foot house. All right, just showed up to the 6,000 square footer. It's gonna need some work. Before I even walk in, you can already tell. Look, the uh, trees up there growing into the soffit area, but what actually tips you off the most before you even step inside is all their uh, repair stuff is sitting outside and they have uh, the kills there to kill mold and stuff so we got to keep our eyes open and try to find all this stuff and see what we're gonna run into all right we got the um, we got most of this house knocked out I'm not gonna be able to cover everything there's Josh back there doing a cameo <laughs> so uh, we got a little bit of everything we got old old water heaters uh, roof leaks um, copper gas line over there but um, you know it's too much to vlog and keep our time on track, but I just want to let you know, thanks for following us. And if you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button below and uh, catch us on the next one. Bye.